Here's Psalms chapter 134 and 1. Alright, Psalms chapter 134 and 1. Behold, behold, bless you the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord that made heaven and earth, and bless the of Zion. Yeah, that's right. So we started this video off always by giving all praises unto the Father, the Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Okay, Yahweh, that's the name of who many call God, or they say Lord, or they call uh, Jehovah. But we do, we do know that his true name in the ancient tongue is Yahweh. Bahashem is how you say in the name of, and Yahweh Shai, that's the true name of who many commonly today call Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, and many other titles. But we know that his true name in the ancient Hebrew tongue, it is Yahweh Shai. So that's the names of the Heavenly Father in the Paleo-Hebrew, which is ancient Hebrew, the Lashawan Kodash, known as the Holy Tongue, okay? And we say Shalom, meaning peace, unto the 12 tribes of Israel, who consist of you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, you so-called Native American Indians, and Hispanics, okay? You consist of the 12 tribes, okay, in the last days. And much respect unto the men who teach this word, man. Okay, double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, okay, who've been in this truth, laboring to teach uh, brothers so that we can go out there and do the same thing through the Spirit, um, you know, walk in the same steps to the best of our ability. And, uh, you know, today the, the lesson, we're going to just jump straight into it, is going to be going into generations, you know, how Yahabba Shemi Ashai has specific generations for specific time periods in history you know so you're gonna find out that there's different people there's different generations that you read about in the bible you know like adam in the beginning in the garden well guess what that was a generation that was going to come back on the earth you see over and over and over but that was that first generation it was a special generation you see even the time when yahweh shah was on the earth that was the same generation as Adam, okay? If, if you're uh, not too well versed in regeneration, you know, there's a such thing as you coming on the earth in the same spirit, but in a different body, pretty much, you see? And the Lord does the same exact thing for generations. Well, what I mean is, uh, you know, pretty much uh, a group of people in that same time period are gonna come on the earth over and over and over, you see? To just prove this before we keep going, give me Ecclesiastes 1 and chapter, uh, sorry, 9. You know, so don't move too quick. Get uh, right, uh, yeah, Ecclesiastes one and nine. All right, here's Ecclesiastes one and nine. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So King Solomon says that the thing that has been, it is that which shall be. Okay, and pretty much there's no new thing under the sun. So nothing here that you see today is new. Not even a, not even you. Okay, you're not some new spirit. Okay, that was born on whatever year that you were born. That's not your first time being on the earth. Okay, you've been on the earth um, multiple times. You see, a baby infant that you look at and you think is a newborn. No, he's in. The, he's pretty much uh, new in his flesh, but his spirit is very ancient. You know, all of our spirits are very ancient. You see. That's why 11, go ahead and get it, go ahead and get 11, right? Or just, just keep reading on, right? 10. All right, verse 10. It says, um, is there anything, yo, give me a second. <clears throat> verse 10, is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new, it hath been already of old time, mm -hmm. which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, come. neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. That's yeah. right. That's right. So there's no remembrance. You don't remember who you are. You don't remember anything from your past life. You see, all you all you can really uh, use is the scriptures. OK, in history to kind of try to, you know, kind of pinpoint certain things. But you don't even know who you are in the scriptures. OK. You can only kind of imagine or you can only kind of think about who you would be or this and that, you know, but the Lord knows who we are. Okay. And pretty much all we know for sure 
is that the generation that we are in right now, it's the same generation that was on the earth when Yahweh Shai walked the earth, you see? Right. So when the Son of Man 2,000 years ago was literally walking around physically, those same spirits are back. Okay, because we know we know this because Yahweh Shai, when he makes his return, he's coming to that same generation that he was on the earth with. And how do we know this? Let me get this right. I appreciate it, Joe. Okay, let me get, let me get this one first right quick. Uh, Revelations chapter one and seven it says, <coughs> "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him." Now this is talking about the second coming of Yahweh, uh -huh. and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so a month. So when Yahweh comes, man, with them chariots. He's coming back to that same, the same generation that crucified him. You know, he's gonna even see those same Romans that pierced him, like put the nails in his hands and drove it through his hands. Mm -hmm. He's coming back to get revenge on those same Edomites that did it to him. You see, so, and we understand the time we live in. We're not, Lord, not gonna be coming back in some different generation. We know that this is the generation because of biblical prophecy. America, Babylon the Great. It really don't got that long, man. We're not going to say this place even has 50 years. Okay, because the Lord, he's moving very quick. So as we see these prophecies come down, we just realize that, yes, the Lord's coming back soon. And it's going to be this generation here. You see? Okay, because we, we, uh, this generation gives off those same attributes as the generation of, oh, when Yahweh Shai died, the gospel went forth and you had different type of proselytes, you had different type of prophets. You had apostles, you had teachers. That was in the time of Acts. And that was like right after the Lord died, right? So that was when that was one of the one that was one of the times when the ministry was literally in the earth, you see? Mm. The gospel was being preached throughout the four corners of the earth back then. The same thing happening right now. You see the same men out on the streets. Those same ancient prophets is out on the streets. Those same apostles is on the streets. Okay? That's why this ministry is, is a big thing nowadays. It's because it was a big thing back in the book of Acts. But it's a big thing right now because it's the same spirits, you see? Mm -hmm. Same spirits doing the same exact thing that they were set up to do. Go get that. Here's Matthew chapter 19 and uh, 28. I think yeah, 28 it says, <clears throat> See, I wish I was speaking. And I wish I said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the mm -hmm. regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and every one that hath forsaken houses, and brethren, and sisters, and father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Come on. That's right, man. Um, verse 30, but many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So, this was Yahweh shall speak to the apostles, and he said that, you know, in the regeneration, they follow him. And in this time, pretty much the same generation that was in the time of Yahweh Shai following him is back on the earth, okay. you know. And the brother was bringing out in Revelations, I believe it was 1 and 7, that even the Romans who pierced him in the hands, they're gonna see Yahweh Shai, mm -hmm. right? So are the apostles That's and right. you brethren who bring out this word, right? If you're part of that elect number, right? From the predestination of the world, you're gonna be able to, you know, be beamed up in those chariots. So, okay. you know, the Lord said that many of them, many people are gonna, you know, inherit throne. Well, the 12 are gonna inherit those thrones. And then for the rest of the you elect, right? The elect 144 and the one third, you guys will be able to see the kingdom. That's right. Yeah, that, that's it on there. Come on, that's a good that's a good point because the Lord says you would struggle me in the regeneration. So if you're following Yahweh Shai back then, in the regeneration, okay, meaning in the next life, you're gonna do the same thing. You see? So we're gonna we have to figure out that yeah, man, if you rejected Yahweh Shai back uh back then, you're gonna reject him now. But if you followed him back then, you're by default, you're gonna follow him now, you see? That's, right. uh, let's get this, Mark 8 and 38. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my works, words in this adulterous and sinful generation, 
Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So if you were pretty much uh, uh, ashamed of Yahweh back then, you ignorantly rejected him. Because I say ignorantly, because a lot of people didn't know that he was the Hamashiach, you know? They saw the miracles, they saw the works, but they just completely, like, didn't expect that to be him, you know? They're like, this can't be the Son of Man, you know? They expected the um, the Son of God to be raised up in some palace. They expected him to, you know, come at that very moment and establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. And that's not what he did. He came to be meek, to be humble, lowly, like it says, lowly upon an ass, right? And the way of salvation, he only preached it. He didn't actually come with the salvation as far as physically. He didn't really give us the kingdom. And that's what Israel was expecting, you know? So many people rejected him because it was really ignorantly because they, they didn't really think that was a Hamashiach, you see? And some people knew. Some people straight, like the scribes and Pharisees, they knew that he was, but they rejected him off right at the bat. Mm -hmm. So if you were pretty much rejecting Yahweh Shai in that generation back then, you're going to reject him right now, ignorantly now. Okay, you're gonna reject this word. I right, so that's a it's a very special thing, man. If you understand it, just know Yahweh Shai, hey Yahweh Shimei, I chose you. You know, they chose you. To, let me get this right. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. All right, let me get this. This is second uh, second Peter. All right, <clears throat> second Peter chapter two and no first Peter chapter two and nine. Okay. It says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that's right. We are that chosen generation, man. We're that chosen priesthood. The Lord chose this specific generation to be the generation to see the coming of the Son of Man. He chose this generation to be the same generation that saw him on the earth 2,000 years ago. This is the same generation that was in the wilderness with Moses, you see? And Yahweh Shai was in the chariot. And Moses came down and made a covenant with us. We're the same generation at the time of Adam. Okay, because guess what? Okay, Yahweh Shai, um, he is Adam, you know? I think I already said that pretty much. Can you give me Romans chapter uh, 5 and 12 right quick? Yahweh Shai was Adam, you see? So those same people that were in the time with Ad, uh, with Adam in the garden, because we understand that no, it's not. It wasn't just one man. It was not just one man and one woman naked eating fruits. Okay, that's that was parabolic. We understand that it was actually nations of people in Genesis. You see, and Adam, he was pretty much a cho He was a chosen vessel, and he was set above all the rest of these other nations at that time. But you also had people under him which we you know lord willing we were the same ones there go and get that it's romans um, 5 and 12 wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for that is half sin for all for that all have sinned mm -hmm. for until the law of sin was in the world wait read that one more time 5 and 12 5 and 12 wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, so death, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Nevertheless, death, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the multitude of Adam's transgressions, who was the figure of him that was to come. Right. So, by one man, sin entered into the world. And we know Adam was the one that went off. Okay? He was the one who committed the sin. So that's when we fell. That's when that fall in the state came. You see, and we were cast out of the Garden of Eden. He says, but by one man, sin, uh, one man, sin came into the world, but by one man, sin is going to be pretty much conquered, which I wanted that scripture. I can read that one too. Go to get the yeah. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death right. reigned by one, mm -hmm. much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So Yahweh Shai, he's the one man that's going to be able to give atonement for sins. One man brung sin, 
and one man is going to be able to clean up those sins. Okay? So Adam brought the sin. Yahweh Shai is one who cleans it up. And Adam was nothing but a, a, a figure, you know? He was nothing but pretty much um, a foreshadowing of what was to come. Okay? So pretty much Yahweh Shai foreshadowed, or Adam was really a foreshadow of Yahweh Shai because they are the same spirits. Okay? Yahweh Shai went off in the beginning, but he came back on earth in the body of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And he came to cl clean everything up, you see? So that's why we understand that Yahweh Shai is Adam. Okay? Let me get this. Revelation is 1 and 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was to come, the Almighty. So Yahweh Shai says, I'm the Alpha and I'm the Omega, you know? He says, I'm the beginning and the ending. So it's going to begin with Yahweh Shai and it's going to end with Yahweh Shai. So it began with Adam, which was Yahweh Shai's spirit, and it's going to end with him, you see? So that's how we make that correlation to know that, hey, that's it. And we are the same generation, man. We are that chosen generation. The fact that you here in Babylon the Great, um, um, getting the spirit of the life of God in you, man, understanding this truth, being able to see these prophecies, okay, and Lord will endure to the end to see his coming, that means that you are chosen, man, to see that. But the thing about it is that not all these uh, generations are going to be here to witness that. You know, that's why even if you go to Matthew Matthew 13, it tells you that, you know, the things that we see, many righteous men have wanted to see those same, same things that we are currently seeing right now. You see? Uh, let me get this right quick in the book of uh, Matthew. Okay. Matthew, give me a quick second. Matthew chapter 13, and it says uh, 10. Well, I want to go ahead and get a, actually for 13. It says, Therefore I speak unto them in parables, because they seeing, see not, and hearing, hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Which saith, by hearing you shall hear indeed, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, their eyes are dual of hearing, and their ears they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets... And righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And uh, and to hear those things which you have heard and have not heard them. You see? And that's really what's special about us. Okay, right now, we we get to really behold these these things that these prophets were prophesying about for ages. And it was, it was hidden from them. But we are the ones who are going to be able to physically see it with our own eyes. Lord willing, we're going to be the ones to physically see how we shall return. You see? Yeah. We're going to see the miracles being done. We're going to see so many, okay, different type of things in this last captivity. Okay, because this last captivity is really the most important one, you see? Because this is going to be the end of pretty much what you call this, uh, this terrestrial kingdom, you know? Because it's always going to be here on earth, but it's going to be the end of a kingdom ruled just by regular men, you see? And, and sin in the world. No, the next kingdom to come is going to be pretty much sin going to be blotted out. There's going to be no such thing as iniquity as far as amongst Israel. We're not going to have mortal bodies. Okay, this old way of living, man, of getting decrepit, getting old, dying and stuff, you see, that's going to be done away with. And we're the last generation and, and it's going to be the, the second coming, you see, which is a very, very, uh, you know, this is, that's, that's something that's kind of mind boggling to believe that we we're a part of that same generation. We're a part of this generation, man. We're chosen people, a chosen priesthood, man. So hey, that that's something to actually be uh, considering that we in this last generation, hey, it's not something to really be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, these other generations, these other prophets, some of them not here, you see? Some of them are not here to experience this. Now, I'm not saying the Lord can't send certain people, like pick out and choose certain individuals to come and be a part of this generation 
Because he can do that, you know? Let me get this right quick. Okay. Uh, this is going to be the book of 2nd Ezra. Okay, because it was prophesied that the Lord was going to send um, the major prophets in the last days, you know? So this 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 captivity or this cat this this uh this generation is gonna be uh it's gonna be pretty much what you say like the most mightiest generation, you know? The the word's gonna go out on a grand scale because the Lord's gonna send out his major spirits, you know, or his major prophets. This is Second Ezra chapter one and I wanna go ahead and get thirty five. It says, Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which have not heard of me, yet shall believe to whom I have showed no, no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. They have seen no prophet, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejo uh, rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit, they believe the things that I say. God, that's, that's talking about us. Edris. Okay, the Lord was pretty much talking about this generation. We're that generation of faith. We haven't seen an angel. We haven't seen any miracles. We haven't seen any real prophets who've been dealing with like the Lord on the first hand level. We haven't pretty much witnessed these type of things, you see? But we are we we're pretty much all we're doing is relying on our faith and relying on the word of the Lord, man, and we're repenting, you know? And these other nations these other generations, man, hey, they saw damn the works. They saw Okay, the angels on Mount Sinai, you know, they pretty much heard the voice of the Lord out of heaven. They saw all these miracles. They saw the different prophets throughout the generations. These these prophets literally dealt with angels firsthand. There were so many different uh, signs that God was real, that we were Israel, that God was dealing with us. All these different things throughout the scriptures, we can see our forefathers, I mean, though they have faith, their faith was was backed up by what they saw, you see? So we are the generation of faith because we see none of these things, yet we still believe, you know? Now this is gonna be 38. And now brother, behold, what glory and see the people that come in from the east unto whom I will send for leaders, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Oasis, Amos, Micah, Joel, Abadiz, Jonah, Nahum, Abekic, Sephaniah, uh, uh, Agagas, uh, slide, Agias, Zach, uh, Zechariah, Malachi, which is also called an angel of the Lord. Okay, so the Lord said he's going to send all these men to this last generation. You see, see, all these men are from different generations, but you know, like I, that's the point I said, the Lord can pick and choose different people to come into one generation. You see, in the same generation that he wants. You don't have to abide by that three to four generation, man. The Lord can make you die. I mean, you can pretty much die, go back to the spiritual realm. The Lord can send you right back on earth, you see? Or you can just wait out the period, the waiting period. It just depends how the Lord wants. So that's the point, man. That's what's happening. The Lord sent his major prophets out here in the last days. All right? Get your precept. Yeah. Let me just look at their um, 18 and 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him that we bear along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So, <clears throat> when Yahweh Shai makes his return, he's going to come back into this generation. And this brother was going into the generation of faith. So, the Most High, he's going to see uh, faith upon the earth. All right, and that's for the elect. But let me get this one. Here's 2nd Edris chapter 16. And I'll start at 17. This is Edris. Because Edris, he's, Edris is finna be here. I believe Edris is finna be here as well in these last days. So let me start at actually. Uh, I'll start at 14. It says, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundations of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backwards, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return 
So this is going into Jacob's trouble. When all hell starts to break loose, the Most High, he's going to send the plagues upon the earth. <clears throat> it's like he's going to send the plagues upon the earth and all hell is just going to break loose, right? And that's when Jacob's trouble is going to kick off. But it's in 17, it's what it says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mourning, the beginning, beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, what shall I do in the in these evils shall come. Right, so Mrs. Edris, he says, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So Edris is gonna be here too, right? And he's saying who will deliver him in those days. So that just goes to say how bad it's gonna be in Jacob's trouble. But at the end of the day, that was just a point to show you that Edris even here. Edris is gonna be here too. Con. And just to back that up, Matthew 24 and 34. Very last saying to you, this generation shall not pass. So all these things um, be fulfilled. So, yeah, like we said, this generation that we're currently in, it's not going to pass, man. Okay, this specific generation, we can't go until all these troubles come upon earth, you see? So all these prophets prophesied about them. The majority of them are back on the earth, you see? Now, we're not going to say each and every one of them are on the earth. It's like not every spirit is on the earth right now, you see? There's certain spirits that are literally in the spiritual realm right now. They're not even they're not going through much right now because they're at rest. Okay? So uh uh and even to show you the Lord doesn't disturb the the uh the generations, it says Second Nature chapter four, verse thirty five, did not the souls of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chamber saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward. So you had all these different souls and different generations who asked the question, you know, how long are we going to have to hope and wait for the end? How long are we going to have to wait for the Messiah? This and that. You know, we pretty much have the same questions. But our forefathers were asking those same uh, questions, you know. That's why Yahweh Shai says, many righteous men and prophets have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, you know. He says, and he said unto Uriel, the angel, and gave them answer, saying, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he hath weighed the world in the balance. By measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times, and he did not move nor stir them until the measure, said measure, be fulfilled. So Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Bashim al Shah has a strict order on how he uh, has all things set up, you know? Everything's about order. You coming on the earth, it's order, you know? Every three to four generations. Spirit, generations of people, they can't mix, you know? The Lord doesn't mix the generations. So you're not going to have two generations on the earth at the same time, you know? That's why, like, you have back then, you had, like, people in the dark ages, you know? You have people from, um, you know, the, the, these ancient times. These these generations probably not the same generations that we were in, you know? They're low. They had lower understanding. Okay, the Lord didn't put the spirit out on the earth in those days. But that's why you go to Daniel. It tells you that uh, in the last days, many are going to run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased, and that's the generation we are in. We're in the generation where knowledge is abounding. You know, it's increasing the earth. Ezekiel, the forty-seven chapter, talks about how Ezekiel had water going to his ankles, then to his knees, then to his loins, and then at a point. The water was so so much that he had to swim through it okay those waters were representative of knowledge you see and every time the the uh the water was at a different level on his body like his ankles or his knees that represented a time period in history you know a different generation in history certain generations were on earth when the waters or the knowledge was just very low there was just no knowledge of god in the land right like in the time of samuel it says that there was no vision. There was like no open vision in those days. The word of the Most High was like precious in those days, because it was just like there was no prophets. You know, the Lord had the the low the Lord had the knowledge very low on earth, and then it got to the knees. So pretty much the knowledge is going to be increasing over time. Right now, we're in a time when Ezekiel was flowing, man. He was he had to swim through those waters. The knowledge is just out here, bro. You see. We're in the time of the end, man. This is the this is like the uh, information age, man. 
Okay, the truth is springing forth throughout all the earth. Okay, let me get this right quick. Okay, and this is a sure sign of, uh, you know, that we in the end. This is uh, a second address, chapter uh, 6 and 28. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which has so long been without fruit, shall be declared. So this truth, man, that's, that's been the truth. You know, what we tell, what, what the Lord has on the earth through the apostles, you know, starting off with the elders and the apostles, you know, on down pretty much having this, this word been going out through the spirit of the most high, this truth that a lot of people don't accept nowadays, they think it's some crazy religion. They think that it's some cult, you know, they think that pretty much it's, it's hate speech. This is the same truth that has been the truth forever, like since the beginning. But this truth that has so long been without fruit or pretty much has not been declared, it's now being declared, you know? And it's being made manifest that, hey, the truth is not what you thought it was. Same thing that Yahweh, people didn't think Yahweh Shai was who they thought he was. <clears throat> That's why they rejected him. So they're going to do the same thing now. They're going to reject what they just, um, just what they, you know, what the Lord blinded them to, you know? They're blinded, you know? Uh... That's why you got Second Peter. I got this last precept. Okay, so a lot of people who can't get this truth and who don't understand it, and hey, that's almost just like hey, they got judged. Unless the Most have mercy on them, they're not gonna come back to the truth. Okay, they're they're set in stone for that judgment. This is First Peter two and eight, and the stone of stumbling, and the stone of stumbling. A rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto also they were appointed you know so people are going to stumble at the word the word is who Yahweh Shai the word is just even when we're preaching the word you need to understand that this is the spirit of Yahweh Shai so when people don't understand this or they stumble at it they can't they can't get it through their thick skulls that we're the Israelites the Edomites going in slavery, the nations going in slavery, Yahweh Shai so-called black man, they can't even get those simple things, right? So how do you think they're going to understand the deep things like predestination? No free will, okay? How do you think they're going to understand um, okay, these mysteries? They can't, man, because they stumble at that because they were appointed unto that, because that is their lot, okay? The Lord made them from the beginning to be that, that spirit. That's why they're going to come on earth each and every generation in that same lot. And that's not the topic today. Lord willing, we can probably get into that, uh, how everything's uh, predestinated, you know. But, uh, you know, pretty much that's how it goes down, man. You got a precept? No. Nah, come, man. So, you know, that we're not going to make this video too long, but, you know, it's just a quick video showing you how hey, we the generation of faith. We're in that last generation, man. It's the most important generation. And, and we got to pretty much uh, do our works right now, you know, to the best of our ability so that we don't have regrets uh, when Yahweh Shai comes back, you know. But, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till next time, Shalom.